Hello, everybody. TGIF, it's Friday. This has been an incredibly long week. I hope that you are ready for the weekend. I know we are. Um, so it's time for Facebook Live. This is my Facebook Friday I do every week. And I thought I had posted a sneak peek on my group page here. And I realized just like an hour ago that I hadn't even done that over there. I did it over at Pink Bugger Designs business page, but hopefully you guys find me. You know I'm here. All right, let's see. Yeah, you know the schedule, and hopefully you will find me. So let's see. I'm going to make sure I'm in the right place. I'm going to share this over. Hey, Gina, how are you? Let's see. I'm going to share this to, hmm, it seems to be taking longer than normal. I hope you guys are doing good. Um, it is the last Friday. Well, I, for some reason, this has changed. You know, Facebook, they keep us on our toes, don't they? They've totally changed it and I can't figure out how to share it. <laughs> Let's see, okay, I'm gonna try one more. Share to a group. No, we don't wanna share it to a group. We wanna share it to, oh, forget it. I'm giving up. <laughs> I'll do it afterwards. Um, they change things without telling us on Facebook all the time. It's just like to keep us on our toes. Thanks, Andrea, for sharing. I appreciate it. Hey, Kathy. Hey, everybody. Okay, so today's our last Friday of October. What has what has happened to October? It's my favorite month, and it's gone pretty much. Next Friday, November 1st, I'm going to be showcasing the brand new Christmas Time is Here suite that will be available only in... Um, November. Shelly, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you made two lives in a row too. Um, so next Friday, make sure you have plans to join me. Um, I already have projects designed for next week. I want to show you the gorgeous new um, designer series paper, ribbon, uh, glimmer dots, dies, stamp set, and bracelet. Okay, so make sure you make plans next Friday at two o'clock. Um, this week has been crazy, you guys. We moved my parents into their new house Finally, they are here. Um, we moved them in on Tuesday, and you forget how exhausting moving is, right? Oh my gosh, exhausting, and I wasn't even the one moving. Um, but they are getting settled in, getting things in order, and uh, it's been fun. Uh, so thanks for patience with me this week. If you sent me an email, it took me a little bit longer to get back with you. Okay, I think I'm gonna flip the camera over right away because I have baskets lined up here of things I want to show you and I think it's much easier for you to see when I flip the camera so let me do that um so close your eyes oh Tammy you're homesick from work I'm sorry you're sick but I'm happy that you're home isn't that kind of nice sometimes I mean it's not it's not nice to be sick but sometimes it's just nice to just be at home and not have to do anything I know, but being sick is, you know, when I was working, um, when I was a teacher, I really hated having to um, use my sick days for being sick. <laughs> I wanted to use them for something fun. So sometimes that's that kind of stinks. Okay, first announcement, last call for hashtag Elfie stamp a stack. I've actually already started cutting today. It is a huge endeavor. Um, so... But it's not too late. I'm giving you guys till midnight tonight to register for this class. Um, this ribbon is on back order. Oh no, it's on low inventory the last I checked. I believe I have ordered enough for everybody and for hopefully those of you um, who want to register, I can get those ordered before tonight. Did you guys hear that little burp in my throat? Oh my God, that's embarrassing. It wasn't a burp, you guys. It was totally Diet Coke. Wow, is that what today's gonna be like? Oh my gosh. I can't believe I just said burp on a Facebook Live, but hopefully you didn't hear it. <laughs> okay, last you're going to see an Elfie stamp a stack. Second of all, next week is my November classes, and they're my favorite Christmas treats to go. Um, I can't get over, I I'm sorry, I'm having to think about what I'm doing because I'm just in my head right now being ridiculous. Um... Okay, November, <laughs> November Christmas treats um, is gonna be Cup of Cheer. This is the uh, class to go for November, one of them. These are all Christmas treats. Details on that coming next week. 
And the other second class is the Snowfront Stampa Stack. And I have to say, oh my gosh, gorgeous. I didn't think this was my kind of stamp set. Uh, I changed my mind. Beautiful. So be looking for these two next week. This one's going to include the new gold glitter enamel dots and the gold uh, shimmer ribbon that is only available in November. So that will come out next week, um, probably Monday or Tuesday. So be, look, be on the lookout for that. I have a note right here to remind me to tell you that I'm having a garage sale here at my house tomorrow with some of my fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrators. I live right outside of San Antonio, Texas in a little um, suburb called Holotus. So if you are in the area and you would like to come shop retired product, we're all pulling all of our retired product, um, stamps, ribbon, dies, embossing folders, kits, embellishments, um, tons of things. So if you're in the area and you want to come tomorrow, 8 a.m. to noon, message me for my address and I'll get that to you, okay? All right, next up, how about Paper Pumpkin this month? Have you guys seen it? It is gorgeous. If you are a card maker, this is a kit for you for sure. Um, 10 cards. I made them all last night. They're relatively easy, but they have these little die cut trees that you stick on with many dimensionals and they're just gorgeous. So gorgeous. So guess what? I have several extra kits. If you would like one, I can drop it in the mail to you. Um, let me know and we can take care of that through PayPal and, um, I will be happy. I actually have quite a few extras this month because last month I ordered a bunch of extras to have the Halloween treats and then I never changed my subscription. <laughs> so I have quite a few extras. So anyway, this is what it looks like. You get a little Night of Navy ink spot and a cute little stamp set. Um, I like that little snowflake. That's good to use. And then next month, Paper Pumpkin it's called, this is called Winter Wonders, and next month it's Winter Wonders Part 2. So next month's kit is going to coordinate with this, but it'll be treat packages next month. I kind of like that they give us a heads up. If you're a subscriber, you can always opt out. Like if you don't want treats, then you can skip next month. Or if you don't want cards, then you'll know, you know, Ooh, I don't, cards are coming up. I don't want cards. Skip that month. But anyway, um, next month will be treat packaging that'll be the one that ships in November so if you want this one please let me know I would be more than happy to send it to you um, through the mail it won't take too long all right so let's see what else I have got for you um, all-star tutorial bundle we've got just less than a week to get the October 2019 all-star tutorial bundle um, these are free to anybody who spends $50 online with me or more. Um, they're also free to my downline. So if you've ever thought about buying that starter kit for me, this is one of the perks that you get. Um, it's also available in my PDF store for $15. And here's my project this month. So cute. Okay. Well, there's a new one coming out on Friday for November. Um, Christmas time is here sweet that's what I, I showed you guys this stuff last week it's just gorgeous we'll be doing that next Friday okay all right how about some prizes we've got prizes Shirley Holland and Sandy Cordial 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 congratulations ladies you were the winners from last week's um, Facebook sharing i always pick two random winners and you are the winners so please message me your addresses so i can get these in the mail to you i'm reading kathy's comment she says it seems to me that paper pumpkins are getting better and better each month i have to agree with you kathy you know paper pumpkins been around i think five years now is that right and they are getting every month i just it blows my mind there we seem to have the the paper pumpkin department is two gentlemen which is you know a little less common in the crafting industry and they are amazing their marketing their designs their thoughtfulness with the kits are just incredible so i totally agree with you all right this week i'm giving away a two from our house to yours so cute, along with a pack of in color markers each. So I will pick two people next week who have shared this video. And um, all you have to do is share on Facebook. And if, if we are not friends on Facebook, then I can't necessarily see that you've shared it. So make sure you comment that you shared, if that makes sense, okay? Um, just, you know, comment shared, and that way I know to enter you into the drawing. 
Okay, we are down to the final part that I need to tell you before we start stamping. If you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, I always pick a product um, and then design three projects with it. And this week, I have picked seasonal wreaths like that. That's it. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that in a minute. But um, the fun part is that if you really like these projects and you want me to send them to you for free, all you have to do is put in a minimum $35 order by Monday at midnight and then I send you them uh, for free. This is what they look like. Here's last week's. We make a little tag, a thank you tag that we throw in and I send it right to you in the mail on um, Tuesday or Wednesday, so you get them pretty quickly, okay? So make sure you get those orders in by Monday at midnight, and you wanna use this host code right here. Um, if your order is over $150, remember you earn Stampin' Rewards, so don't use the host code. Um, if you use the host code, you don't get those Stampin' Rewards. Um, on any order over $150. Now, I will still send you everything for free even if you don't use the host code uh, on an order that's over $150. Anything under, use the host code. That's how I know you actually want these three make and takes, okay? Everything that we've talked about is on the second page of today's PDF, which is over at pinkbuckaroo.com. I will update the link at the top here when I am done, um, when I am not live anymore. Um, and I'll take you over to the post on my blog that has all three projects. And under the third photo, you can click the link and save or print the PDF. It has all the products I'm gonna use as well as all the measurements. And it has a link to, if you wanna register for the Elfi class, and two little sneak peeks of those classes that I just showed you okay okay we are done thank you that's so sweet who said that Jeff and Donna Brown love your Facebook Fridays thank you I love them too now you guys I have this mat down here that I stand on when I'm working one of those like squishy mats to make your feet not hurt but it makes me feel too tall when I'm doing Facebook Friday so I just had to move it out of the way Okay, let's talk about the stamp set that I chose today. Seasonal wreaths, this is it. It's on page 59 of your catalog. Um, it's more, it says seasonal, so you've got fall, you've got winter, and you've got flowers, which could be spring or summer. And I actually use this one with the intention of it being Christmas, like a Christmas wreath, um, but then I used a general sentiment. But, so this stamp set coordinates with these dies, which you can flip back over to page seven and find these dies at the very front right here. And they are called the all around wreath dies. And they are actually bundled with the other wreath stamp set. It took me a while to realize we had two <laughs> wreath stamp sets. I didn't get it for about a month until I re really looked at the catalog and was like, oh, there's two, they're different. So this one on page seven is called Tidings All Around and it's bundled with these dies that we're gonna use. And you know, when you buy the bundle, you save 10%. So if you want those two together, you use this item number down here and you get the bundle price. Now, this stamp set does not come bundled with these dies. Um, that you can buy them separately, or you can buy this bundle and add this on so that you have more ways to use your dies. Okay, does that make sense? So these are a bundle, but this is not what we're using today. We are using this one at the back of the catalog and this one at the front of the catalog. <laughs> it's confusing, I know, but it's on page seven. And then page, it's like way in the back page 59, which also is where these holiday rhinestones are. Took me about a month to see those two, way in the back. I feel like by the time we get to the back of the catalog, we're overwhelmed and we're like, uh, you can't see anything anymore because <laughs> we're so overwhelmed. Okay, so let's get started. This whole Facebook uh, Friday, came about because I made this card for my team swap. So that's one of the cards we're gonna make, but we're not gonna make that. That's gonna be the last project we make. We're gonna start with this one, which is well, maybe my favorite of the three, and it's a fall wreath, okay? So we're gonna do some embossing, we're gonna do some coloring, we're gonna do some splattering. This card is probably not one you would want to make a bunch <laughs> <laughs> because the wreath does take quite a bit of time to um, 
to color. And I am going to use lots of Stampin' Blends. I have them all in here. You know what? I'll just pull them out and tell you what I'm using as I'm using them, okay? And then we're also going to use my favorite uh, Buffalo Check Background stamp, which was on sale this week during our one day sale. Thank you to all of you who ordered during the one day sale. It was really successful for Stampin' Up. They, um, our CEO, Sarah, posted a video yesterday of her over on the pick line helping them uh, pick orders because it, we had such a huge response to that sale. So congratulations, everybody. You made it a success. Now this stamp we're using is the fall leaf stamp from the seasonal resets and it's so big that I feel like it is best used on um, the Stamparatus. Now the biggest clear block will also fit it. It barely fits on that second biggest. It sticks off a little bit. Um, so that's why I decided to use it on my Stamparatus, okay? Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. So let's ink it up. I'm going to stamp it on crumb cake. Remember a couple weeks ago when we colored the turkey on crumb cake cardstock with our Stampin' Blends? I just really like that color or that uh, look when you stamp, when you color those vivid markers on crumb cake cardstock. So that's what we're going to do. And you'll notice, well, maybe I went too fast, but this one didn't stamp very well. So I just put, I laid it back down and pushed down on it. That's one of my favorite things about the Stamparatus is that your bigger stamps, if you don't stamp it right, it's still lined up and you can just press that down again until you get it all stamped. There's something I want to point out about this um, stamp that I almost forgot. Where are my dies? It is not symmetrical. So let's say the wreath die when we get there you have to turn 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 until you find the right sweet spot but the stamp itself if you guys can see right here it has a little pointy thing right there a little notch and that is to help you know where to line it up so i've stamped it like this and i will put my die like that see how the die has the pointy part right there now the 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 clue, the clue or the key there is to remember <laughs> where it is and not turn your paper around and around, which is what I'll end up doing as I'm coloring. But if you're with it, you can actually make that a lot easier by keeping that um, notch. And you know what we can do? We can take our pencil and just put a little mark there to tell us where that notch is. Okay, so look at this image. It's very intricate. It's got lots of leaves. It's got kind of that grapevine um, wreath in there, some acorns, some berries, and some flowers. So I just kind of started coloring. I pulled all my fall colors. And of course, right off the bat, I chose pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna color the leaves with pumpkin pie. Um, not all the leaves, but it's there's kind of a pattern to it. There's three leaves there and then three leaves here. And I'm going to go around and do all of my pumpkin pie first. I've actually colored this about six times now, and I'll show you some other things in a minute with it. Um, so I've kind of set up a system with myself. Now I'm going to do Mango Melody on, the, on one of the other little leaves there. And the, because we've stamped on crumb cake, it's going to create a um, muted tone. So I'm not really concerned about doing any um, shading on this. Let's see. We're going to now do, what else did I use? Oh, Cajun Craze. Yes, I love Cajun Craze. During the fall, all my Cajun Craze haters out there, I don't want to hear it because I love Cajun Craze in the fall. There's some people who do not like Cajun craze. Now I'm not gonna color this whole thing. Well, maybe I will. I pre-colored it in case it took too long and you guys got super bored watching me color. Um, let's see. Now we're gonna take, let's do Old Olive. There are these little flowers. So we'll do Old Olive with the little flowers. And you'll find when you're when you're almost done that you've missed, you know, a leaf here, a flower there, berries here, berries there. So you might have to go back and fill in. Now the little berries will just do cherry cobbler. 
How many of you out there have a good collection of Stampin' Blends? I've been offering them for quite a while now as add-ons with my classes. So I know some of you have been building up your, your um, supply of Stampin' Blends. They are my favorite. Lisa, Cajun Craze has its place. And Nathan says he's liking the Cajun Craze. Now, granted, if it's spring, yeah, I probably don't want to use Cajun Craze either. But in the fall, it has its place. You guys are right. All right, now we have little acorns. So I'm going to just color all the little bottoms of the acorns in dark soft suede. And then I'm going to grab my light soft suede and color the top of the acorns. This is very um, relaxing and therapeutic. Turn on a movie and color yourself some wreaths and you'll love it. All right, now I'm going to take crumb cake. Basically, all I have left is the grapevine part. And I'm just going to take my, let me look at my sample. No, I'm going to go back and do something else too. Um, just kind of go along that circle, that outline, and fill in the grapevine. All right, and don't worry, it doesn't have to be super perfect because, like I said, it's pretty muted, and we're gonna put it behind our sentiment. I actually cased a card by uh, Rich Atkins, I believe is his name. Um, it was a little bit different, but he had a wreath behind the sentiment and I loved it. So this is this card is based on that. Now there are these little sprigs here and I'm gonna go and just fill those sprigs in with pumpkin pie and mango melody. And I think that I will stop there and pull out my pre-colored one so that we can go ahead and cut it out. Now, here's the problem. Let's see, can I remember We've got the star there, let's see. Does it match? Aha, it does match. Okay, I will save that one and finish that card later. Okay, so we've matched our little notch and I'm gonna cut this. Let's see, Joanne says, I use the blends all the time with an occasional use of markers. I am finding the exact same thing. Um, every now and then now I use my Stampin' Right markers, but those Stampin' Blends probably get used every single time I'm crafting. Pretty much every time. Okay, so we've cut that out. Now let's, let's see, let me move the big shot. I'm gonna bring over my, my old friend, the Buffalo Check background check, and we'll use background stamp, and we'll use the, uh, Stamparatus again. Now, on when was our sale? Wednesday. I posted, let's see, I'm going to line that up. This is a half sheet of very vanilla. I posted lots of samples um, using the background stamp. I'm going to do this in early espresso, and I just used that ink pad. Did I put it back over here? Yep, I put it back where it's supposed to go. Um, so I posted lots of samples that I have made using this stamp because it was on sale. And uh, boy, I have used it a lot. Um, but someone said they needed some tips on getting it to stamp correctly. And I, I just feel so adamant about the Stamparatus that you need to use the Stamparatus when you're stamping. Because you can see the first time you stamp, you might not get a good clean image, but if you have the Stamparatus, you can just continue to press on it and fill it in. And I always like to do two layers of ink. And if you were just stamping with your big clear block or wooden block, you would have, you would not be able to do that. So Stamparatus and I always say, put your full weight into it. Don't just kind of push on it. Now, <laughs> this is what happens to your hands when you're using it. I'm a messy stamper, and I just cleaned it right before a video, too. Um, and, you know, like stand up and push down on it so that you get good full coverage all the way around. Now, I'm looking for my trimmer because we're going to trim this down. Oh, it's actually where it's supposed to be. Imagine that. Here's the new Stammin' Trimmer, and I've shown you guys this before. It will be available to all of you next Friday, I believe. Oh, now I'm scaring myself. Yeah, right? <laughs> Demos back me up. 
Do we do we officially know the release date? Well, I'm scaring myself now. I'm going to cut this down to well, let's do that again because I didn't cut that very good. I didn't stamp it straight, so I've got to make sure. The um, new Santa trimmer is only going to be $25, you guys. $25. That's a pretty good, pretty good price point. All right, now we're going to cut this. We need it to be five and a fourth. Yes, <laughs> okay. Michelle, thank you for, for getting me out of what I thought I was going to be in trouble. Sometimes they tell us things, you guys, that we are not supposed to share yet. <laughs> and sometimes then they tell us and we can share. So suddenly I had a moment of panic that I was sharing details I wasn't supposed to share. Okay, Friday, you guys, Friday. Yay, can be part of your Facebook Friday order next week. The new trimmer, $25. It's awesome. You'll love it. Um, the blade is serious. Don't rub your finger on that because you'll have a cut for a week. It's so sharp and deep. It's awesome. And the scoring tool is um, a wheel, which is, it makes a much deeper um, embossed line, which is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I have cut that down. You know, did I cut it to the right size? Let's see. Yes. I cut that down to four by five and a fourth. And I'm again, it was on very vanilla. I don't know if I mentioned that. And I'm gonna adhere it to a piece of early espresso that is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So it's just a sliver larger, okay? And then we're gonna adhere it to, thank you, Andrea, for backing me up. Boy, sweating that. Boy, today has just started off rough, hasn't it? And we have adhered it taped it or glued it or whatever you want to do to a very vanilla thick cardstock base. Now, did you notice the squiggles? Really interesting. This is, um, I've done splatter many, 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 many times um, with shimmer paint. And when I did this, this is our new gold glitz um, ink refill. When I did it, look, it's not normal. Like it wasn't normal splotches you know like round dots um it did these weird like um i don't know like like fibery splatters and i kind of liked it i think maybe it's because i didn't add any water to it when i did it so just a little snippet of possibility but i'm going to add water to it today just a little water with my aqua painter on a clear block and i'm going to splatter see now i added water and we've got like drops, which is what I was going for. But then I kind of thought, ooh, that's interesting. What an interesting texture. This, by the way, is my clear block that I have um, set aside for gold. <laughs> it's kind of, probably needs, it needs a good soaking. It needs a good soaking. All right, let's set that aside to dry. And you know what, we're not even gonna use this because we'll just get that on everything. All right, well, the dogs are coming in to say hello. Yes, you got to see Charlie this week. He's a mess. He is a mess. Now, we're going to use this sentiment to celebrate your day. So, you know, this has a wide reaching, I mean, you could use it for anything, right? Celebrate your day. It could be, I have a friend, Belinda, I don't know if she's watching, but her daughter's getting married in a couple weeks. So, this would be a great fall wedding card it could be a birthday card it could be you know graduation a fall graduation i just rubbed that with the embossing buddy so it would remove the static and now i'm going to stamp this in versamark kind of on the right side this is a one inch strip that is four and a fourth long and we're going to emboss it with gold Hi, Judy. Happy Friday to you. All right. Now, sprinkle that with gold embossing powder. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes the weekend seems crazier than the week. Sometimes I almost dread the weekend because we have to go here, go there, be there, be, you know, do this. This weekend's kind of like that. We've got quite a few things going. And the next weekend's my daughter's birthday. And my 10 year old who's turning 11 you want to make sure you have no stray 
little dots of embossing powder because they will they will light up and be gorgeous right there where they're not supposed to be my 10 year old's turning 11 and she would not she just couldn't decide what she wanted to do for her birthday and I think we finally decided to go to the go-kart place which sounds seems feels like it's going to be awfully loud there <laughs> oh but it's her birthday I'll do what she wants all right so in that beautiful celebrate your day gorgeous I have cut a gold foil stitched scallop border and we're going to put that along the bottom like that and we're ready to put it all together hopefully our gold is dry it does look like it's dry isn't that gorgeous those um gold and silver and um what's the other one copper um ink pads and refills are no longer on the unorderable list i believe maybe one of them is on low inventory i can't remember but check them out if you haven't been able to add them to your list yet you totally should they are gorgeous all right let's put this here and there we go so beautiful what do you guys think pretty right remember i'm always telling you to use your cards um your seasonal cards for non-seasonal reasons you know fall wreath you would think thanksgiving fall but celebrate your day that could be anything in the fall right all right now i want to show you a couple of things my mom was here last week and we were playing around and i made this wreath i told you several i made it several ways um this one i actually instead of stamping the wreath in early espresso like that i stamped it in versamark and embossed it in gold and then colored it in so there's that and then this one i stamped it on very vanilla in versamark embossed it in gold and colored it in i decided to go with the one that's not embossed because to be quite honest with you my eyes i was having a hard time seeing where to color um, something about the gold um, it's beautiful but it it was it was a little harder for my eyes to see especially on the crumb cake i think the very vanilla was wasn't so hard but isn't that beautiful so pretty i'm going to make two more cards with these but i i left them out so you could see the difference um now i told you we would have some christmas variations for today because i know some of you are dying to get started here is the christmas variation i didn't do the splatter on this one just because i um I didn't have time, honestly. I just made it real quick, just a little while ago. Same layout, right? Um, but this time I used this wreath, ooh, this wreath from Tidings All Around. Um, did it in shaded spruce and added some of our real red um, little glimmer dots. And this one would be, if you needed to make a lot, this one would be better than this one because there's no coloring involved here. You just stamp the wreath, um, in one color and then you're done over here it's going to take you you know 10 minutes per wreath to get those to color in um you could also do this wreath if you like the fall colors you could do you could do it you know in cajun craze or mango melody or whatever um but anyway there's a christmas variation and and i did it in whisper white here and this is very vanilla i think i like the vanilla better I don't know. So there you go. There you go. You like these wreaths with a buffalo check, Lisa? I like anything with a buffalo check. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. I want everything and I want all the buffalo check things. All of them. I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it out. Okay, let me clean this mess up and we will make card number two. Oh, I'm just getting ink all over me today. Not sure what that's about. Okay, next up, let me get this. Let's see, we need these blends. We do not need this, we need that, we need that. Okay, now this next card I started making with Christmas in mind. Um, I feel like that's a Christmas wreath, right? Um, but then I couldn't find a scripty font that I liked enough to go in the center of it. So I just decided to use Life is Better With You f straight from the same sentiment. Uh, I mean, the same stamp set, seasonal wreaths. So again, you could use this 
for a plethora, really, of, of reasons. Life is better with you. Thank you card. Best friends. Um, you know, seriously, possibilities are endless. I, I like that sentiment a lot. Okay, and we're going to do a technique here because this stamp that makes the wreath is this right here. This, just this little corner thing here. And when my mom was here, we were talking about how that would make a pretty swag if you just did like one on that side. But I wanted to do the wreath, so that's what we're doing. And you will see right here how I have it set up. I played around and experimented and decided that a three and a half inch piece of cardstock is what you need. It works best, a three and a half inch by three and a half inch square. Then you take your, your um, your stamp, oh my gosh, words are hard. Where is my pencil? I wanna draw a line so you can see. You kind of, you kind of really need your, your, uh, your grid paper for this. You know, we sell uh, Stamparatus grid paper that's perfect for this. So we have this three and a half inch square and you take your stamp and you just kind of center it over that one, two, three, those three squares right there in the corner, okay? And then you take your, your your plate and you pick it up and then you're gonna set your three and a half by three and a half inch piece of whisper white and we're gonna ink it in memento again because we're using stamp and blends now you're gonna take it and turn it I googled last night what this technique is actually called and I think it's just called the wreath technique um, that's what I was seeing other people call it. So I don't know if it has an official name, but most people were calling it the wreath technique. And you can do this. We've done this before with balloons, with flowers, with hearts, and you just keep turning your paper and it's going to put them in a circle. And sometimes you might have to play around with it because I tried a three inch piece of cardstock first and they were all on top of each other it didn't work so then i tried a four inch piece and they were too far apart so sometimes you have to play with your paper to, to see what size you need isn't that awesome so fun okay now again choose whatever colors you want it does not have to be the same as mine but in my mind i was thinking christmas so I went with Old Olive, Mossy Meadow, and Real Red. And this one again, like the one before, is gonna take you a little while. Gosh, I have ink all over me. Oh, we'll pretend those are beauty marks right there. They're freckles, they're beauty marks. And I'm gonna take my Old Olive and I'm just gonna kind of color in the bigger leaves, bigger leaves. And then I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I pre-colored it once again for us, that's how far ahead I am today. Then I'm going to take my old, my dark old olive and just add in some shading either at the bottom or along one side of each leaf. Okay. Then I took mossy meadow, dark or light, and then you just color in some of these other little sprigs. Um, you want to, what I like to do is take it and go through the center here where you can see some of the stems just for continuity so that it's all connected and then you can even take the dark mossy meadow and do just a little a few little areas of dark okay then take your light real red and color your flowers don't color the center leave that white Take your dark and where you see those little lines in the center, go dark there. And this one, same thing, dark down here and then I did dark in the middle. Well, that looks like a ladybug or something now. Fill that all in with a light, real red. And then once you have all that done, take your Daffodil Delight or your Mango and color in those centers, okay? Now, for the sake of time, where is it? Where is it? Right here. Ta-da! It's done. Okay, so there you have it. It'll take um, less time than the other wreath, but it still is going to take you some time, okay? Stampin' Beauty Marks, Carla. I love it. All right, now I, I also tried to cut this out with a circle die, 
and a circle punch and we have nothing that will punch it out. Nothing that's big enough. Do I have that one? I think I threw it away. I tried to do a scallop, didn't work. So I decided we're gonna leave it on a square and I'm gonna take my corner rounder and I'm gonna round two corners only like that. So it's kind of that funky shape. Two pointies and two rounds, okay? All right, now let's get that scripty font and we have a circle here somewhere. This is the second smallest stitched circle from the stitched shape dies. And I'm just gonna stamp that again in memento black. And I'm gonna grab my dimensionals right here. Put two in the center. And there we go. Now, designer series paper. I really kind of toyed with a lot of things. We, my mom was here while I was designing. We, we, um, we even embossed the old olive peacock um, foil to put behind here and it was beautiful and that was her vote. But I decided I liked this better. This is the Pressed Petals Designer Series Paper. This is not holiday catalog product. This is annual catalog product. I love that. And don't tell me if I, if I put it upside down. Nita, if you're watching, my daughter's piano teacher, I apologize. I gave my daughter's piano teacher a beautiful card one time that had the piano, the, the music in the background, and I stamped it upside down apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I know how to read music um, but anyway um, I couldn't tell and I don't know on this one let's see yeah I think it did see these are supposed to be on the left side oh well we'll pretend we'll pretend it's still beautiful even if it is upside down okay I put another piece of pressed petals designer series paper there just the wood grain and I'm gonna take my linen thread and tie that around. I'm going to wrap it around three times. Tie a bow. Our linen thread is one of my, probably my top five most used products. And it is either on low inventory or, or on backward. I couldn't believe it. You guys love it as much as I do. People are buying it like crazy. Okay, sp see how I spread those out a little bit? So they'll be just kind of funky. Let's see if we can get this bow to come over just a little bit. Nope. We're going to have to leave it. All right. Now let's get those dimensionals. Where did they go? I just had them. Here they are. And we're going to add this with three dimensionals. You guys are quiet today. Hi, Linda. Are you guys ready for Christmas? Next week, all Christmas all the time starting next Friday oh, I'm not ready I'm never ready for Christmas all right last but not least let's add some of these those holiday rhinestones that I showed you on on that same page with the wreaths and I'm just gonna take some of these green ones and just kind of put them in here like this to give it a little sparkle Christmas comes quickly whoops just took off my putty. This is your my take your pick tool, and if you get that putty to come out, it will pick up your rhinestones like that. Um, Christmas comes fast, right? I know it, there's a lot of Christmas in the stores already, but I am not ready. Okay, card number two is done. You know, I was thinking I did not make an alternate Christmas card for this one, and I totally would thought that I did. But all you have to do to make this one a Christmas card is change the sentiment. That's it. Right, put Merry Christmas, whatever in the center and you have a Christmas card because that could be a Christmas wreath for sure. What do you guys think? I hope you like it. I love it, it's beautiful. And those um, flowers are much, well, I wouldn't say much easier. They're a little bit quicker than the other one. Okay, thanks Joy, I'm glad you like it. The music wreath is, <laughs> thank you, Karen. All right, so we've got one more. I'm gonna put this one aside and we're gonna make one more, the one that I showed you um, at the very beginning, which is what started this whole Facebook Friday. This is my swap card for my team. We had our team meeting on Monday and my amazing downline, Anne-Marie, always coordinates and 
um, organizes our swap. So this month, our theme was uh, gratitude and uh, grateful, any kind of grateful projects. So this is what I made and I loved it. And I said, okay, this has to be a Facebook Friday theme. So that's what we're gonna make. And I do have a Christmas alternative for this card, okay? This one has quite a bit of die cutting on it. And what am I missing? Oh, this one right here. Here are the dies, um, but we're not gonna use that one. We're gonna use this one and these two, okay? So let's do all of our die cutting first. We're gonna cut this wreath. And you guys need to go online and look. There are so many different ways that people have used this die, different colors, all kinds of amazing things. So I'm gonna just do white, but just think about, you know, I mean, truly the possibilities are endless. And if you have it in the spring, you can use, you know, just green and then put little paper flowers on there. It would be super pretty. Um, I'm gonna cut out two because, you know, layers layers we love layers okay now we're gonna do we've got copper foil where did those dies go there they are copper foil and mossy meadow mossy meadow is a newish color for us and i'm finding that i love it it's in the neutrals family which seems weird to me but i love it so that's that those little twigs and mossy meadow and then nope Put that back, Erica, so you don't lose it. Don't just throw it. And then these little copper sprigs. All right, now I have something new. This is your take, our take your pick tool, right? We use this all the time. New in the annual catalog is the dye brush that you can add to your, let's see, I think it has to go on this side, that you can add to your take your pick tool. And this is the first time I'm using it because I've I hadn't ordered it. I forgot about it. All right, so then it comes It comes in a big box. We laughed at our my team meeting because we all, or I gave some away for prizes and um, it came in this big box for just this little thing. But you get two of these just in case, you know, your cat chews one up or <laughs> you lose one. I've heard of cats, they like to chew these. All right, let's get these out. And then we'll do that here too. Really, there's not a whole lot of, little things that this needs to be used for, but there are a few little doodads in our wreath. Right there. All right. Hmm. Let's see, come out. Looks like I didn't cut that one very well. Oh yeah, it's coming out. All right. Now, there's another one. Now let's move all the trash. Uh-oh, little die. I'm putting it where it goes so I don't have to go dig in the trash later. Now I have cut out a stitched rectangle and I did not write down the size. Let's look at the size of this stitched rectangle. It is three by four and, well, like a fourth or four and three eighths, okay? We're gonna layer all of this up on this die. I mean on this rectangle. And I think I'm gonna use my Nemesis, the <laughs> fine tip glue pen. It's my Nemesis because I wanna use it all the time, yet I make a big mess. If you haven't been around me for a while, you haven't been to my Facebook Lives, just know that I am a messy fine tip glue person. I prefer dry adhesive because I always seem to make a mess, but it works really well on things like this. Now, when you put the second one on, you wanna shift it so it's not sitting exactly the same. You wanna, uh-oh, stay there. You want to kind of turn it so that it's off, you know, so you can see both layers, okay? All right, that really needs to dry. Let's put this on here for a minute. I used glue dots. Let me show you the Christmas alternative while we're waiting for that to dry. I used glue dots on this one, but look, you can see them. Boo. If you plan differently, put the glue dots under the bigger parts. I put glue dots on the bigger parts of the wreath on the bottom, which didn't work out well because I put the skinny part of the wreath on top. So if you love glue dots like me, just put them on the fatter 
parts of the top wreath, okay? So look, it's exactly the same except real red stitched rectangle and I changed the sentiment and this is from the other stamp set, Tis the Season. And if you have a dark card base, I didn't do this here. If you have a dark card base, just put in a piece of Whisper White, about four and five and a fourth, and then you can write on it, okay? Pretty, right? So pretty. Um, let's see, oh, I better, I better put this in or the, the glue, fine tip glue pen will say, ha ha, you didn't close me up, I clogged. I don't know if that's how it talks, but. <laughs> okay, where did my early espresso go? Is it over here? It is, we're using it again, early espresso. Erica the enabler, I apologize for enabling, if I'm enabling you. Charlie had to say hello. You guys, my girls are begging for a puppy. They're begging, begging and pleading for a puppy. Am I crazy? Am I crazy to even think about another schnauzer? Using the um, Taylor Tag Punch to make that banner. I know I'm crazy. One time we had three dogs many, many years ago and it was one dog too many, I can tell you that. But puppies are so cute and my girls haven't had a puppy. We've, we've both of our dogs came to us a little bit older than a puppy. I don't know, you guys, I need prayers. Something in my mind is saying, get a puppy. You don't have enough barking at your house. You need more barking. Mm. They've worn me down, really. They've worn me down for sure, the girls, my girls. Um, where are my glue dots? I am gonna use glue dots here because I can cover it up with the bow. Let me grab them over here. Joy, you say I'm not crazy? But will I regret it? My husband says, you know, you're the one that's going to be there all day during the day to deal with a puppy. The craziness of a puppy. And I thought, yeah, that's true. My friend Krista just has a puppy. They've had a puppy for a few weeks. And she's making me think twice, saying how they're like toddlers. Nathan, you have six chihuahuas. Alicia says, my puppy has been so, so much work. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of. Hi. They don't come, um, they don't come potty trained. <laughs> Not an eight week, eight week old puppy. They don't come potty trained. Um, Carla says, be strong, don't do it. Oh, Carla, I know, I know. You know, and I, I um, wait for my husband to be the voice of reason and he's no help. He says, let's get one. I'm like, oh gosh. So now I'm the party pooper if I say no. But yet I'm the one that's gonna have to take care of it. I love schnauzers and the puppies are so cute. You know, our, both of our dogs, so we got Mac when he was about six months old, so he was kind of a puppy, but he came, you know, potty trained and all that. He's always been so good. Linen thread bow, by the way. Um, see how I did? I layered all that with a glue dot. So beautiful. Um, and then Charlie came, he was two years old and he was well trained. So we didn't really have to do any work with either of them. Um, I haven't had a puppy puppy in 20 years. We had one when we first got married when I was young. <laughs> Not young anymore. All right, you guys, I'm gonna use the black dimensionals on here. For one reason, I can't find the other dimensionals, but two, it's a dark card base. Let's see, just put that on with dimensionals. Yeah, you can't, ooh, you totally can't see them. That's awesome. Can you guys see that right there? All right, boom, done. I know, I talked about the puppy the whole time the whole time I didn't even tell you but pretty easy that's a pretty easy card you can do orange for fall ish for grateful you can do red for Christmas you could totally change it up and do spring colors you could do this wreath in like you know uh, pear pizzazz or um, garden green and then add our little punched flowers all around how cute right easy 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 and we're done, you guys. That's all three. That is all three. I'm, gonna, I'm reading your comment. No, don't tell me. Still not trained after a year. <gasps> Oy, we have we have pretty new carpet too. Less than a year old carpet. <laughs> I don't know what to do. All right. So we made this one, which isn't a Christmas card, but 
All you got to do is swap the sentiment. We made this gorgeous one that is not a Christmas card, but all you have to do is change the color and the wreath and the sentiment, and you have pretty much the same card. And then we have this one, which was my swap card. Oh, wow, that red is pretty, isn't it? The white wreath really just makes it pop, I think. All right, you guys, don't forget, if you love these make and takes, I will send them to you for free. Um, if you put in an order with me by Monday at midnight, make sure you use that host code. All of you who ordered on Wednesday for the one day sale, um, if your order was over $35, you're going to get these for free as well because that host code is the same host code as Facebook Friday. So you're already getting that from me. Um, you guys remember about paper pumpkin. I've got a handful of the kits this month and I would really like to not have them stack up in the corner and not get used. So if you'd like to buy one of these, please let me know. Um, what else did I need to tell you? Last day for Elfie, stamp a stack. And that's it. You guys, I'll be back next Friday um, with Christmas all day, every day, beginning next Friday. I hope you're ready. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to come back and read your puppy comments because maybe that'll help me not be so crazy. You guys are so awesome. Have a wonderful weekend, you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.